Over the past year I have attempted many different challenges in New Vegas. They have ranged from running away from angry soldiers to overthrowing the Mojave with nothing but a children's toy. But today, I plan to strip things back to the absolute bare essentials and see how things turn out. So, with that in mind, today's the day we figure out, can you beat Fallout New Vegas? Without any weapons or armour. Character creation is about as straightforward as it gets this time around. Special stats are designed to favour a melee build as I'll only have my fists to work with, so I have prioritised strength and luck and seeing how I won't have much armour either, endurance is fairly important as well. I then just drain the last few points from stats that wouldn't matter and put them in intelligence for more skill points upon levelling up. Tag skills should be fairly obvious as I take unarmed, medicine and barter. I figure that money is going to be pretty important as I'll need it to go towards healing supplies. Finally for traits I mix things up a little bit by taking the build to destroy which grants me an extra 3% chance to critically hit at the cost of faster weapon degradation. This does apply to my bare fists by the way but seeing how they cannot break there is absolutely no downside to taking this. I also take hot blooded just for some added damage on my health drops below half, simply put more damage is good damage. After the creation process I empty my entire inventory onto Doc Mitchell's carpet and then begin looting his house of any healing supplies as well as anything that may fetch a good price at Chet's. Selling everything to Chet doesn't get me as much as I initially hoped and as such I can't afford too many stim packs, regardless some is better than none right now. The first thing I want to do is get some easy levels as I need to upgrade my unarmed skill quickly if I want to actually stand a chance at this run. Sure my fists do go straight through the skulls of some nearby powder gangers but two things to note here is that they only have about 10 health each and in the process, despite the fact they only have 9mm pistols, they almost manage to kill me. Lucky for me there's an unknown bed nearby so I can use that to rest so I don't need to waste my limited healing supplies. With no real direction I head for Prim as the quests in this area are designed to ease in new players so this is probably where I stand the best chance to safely complete quests and earn XP. The escaped convicts in the centre of town manage to rough me up a bit before I get the best of them. Honestly, while ranged fighters hurt a lot, it's the melee attackers I find more annoying as they can block my strikes and just prolong the fight. After they are taken care of and I heal by cozying up to the headless corpse of the town sheriff, I decide to go rescue Beagle. After managing to assert my dominance on the first couple of convicts inside the hotel, I reach level 2 where I dump all of my points in the unarmed and then take the confirmed bachelor perk for 10% extra damage against all male enemies. Both of these factors immediately come into play as I take on the last few surviving convicts. They don't pose that much of a threat as I was able to disarm their leader and from there engage in a rather lengthy fist fight where after about 2 minutes I emerge the victor. After I free Beagle I agree to bring Law back to the town and because I lack the science skill to repair the true sheriff I instead begin to make my way through the Mojave outpost to hand the town over to the NCR. On the way I tried my hand at taking on the jackals inside the highway patrol building but after 2 attempts that ended with me both red and dead I figured running was a much better option. I say better but not foolproof as the jackals and some nearby scorpions began relentlessly chasing me. I was hoping that the NCR would chase them off but instead some overly friendly if a little bloodthirsty merchants came to my aid. With them out of the picture I got a job as an exterminator for Ranger Jackson and got to work fighting some bugs. I expected the ants to put up more of a fight but in the end so long as I backed up when they lunged at me they never really had any good opportunities to do any real damage. I get my rewards from Jackson, level up, and then I convince Major Knight to send reinforcements to Prim, thus helping them with their law problem. Before continuing on I make a quick pit stop back in Good Springs to get the snow globe so I can sell to GM once I arrive in the strip. I should also bring this up now, I have decided to side with Mr House simply because it's been a while. I figure if I'm in the area near Good Springs I may as well make my way through the shortcut to Vegas and then if I'm doing that I should also probably get sidetracked and deal with the Brotherhood. Well, after getting into a scuffle with the powder gangers near Ringo's destroyed caravan and only just managing to survive, it should be fairly clear that a head-on assault of the Hidden Valley bunker is essentially impossible. To briefly delay facing off against the Brotherhood, I stop off in Sloan to fix Snuffle's leg, and when I am not given a sizable reward, I take matters into my own hands and steal just over 300 caps from the workers instead. The bark scorpions around the bunker are great for some early game experience, so once I've wiped all them from the surrounding area, I go to the nearby deceased Brotherhood members so I can grab the code to get into the base, as well as some power armour to sell, as it's a very easy 2000 caps to the right people. As I enter the base I have my non-existent weapons and armour stripped from me, and then I'm thrown back out to deal with the ranger. Now, here's the problem. The explosive collar that is wrapped around my neck cannot be removed. This wouldn't be an issue but as you can see it actually offers some damage resistance meaning it classifies as armour. So rather than feel the run I load back to before I entered the bunker and instead make my way through the Black Mountain shortcut and head for the 188 trading post to grab a key in the shape of Veronica. While this is technically not against the rules I don't like the idea of taking companions along as they are so proficient in combat in New Vegas that it makes any challenge where they are free to use an absolute breeze. To that end I fast travel with her back to the bunker and thanks to me killing all those scorpions earlier she doesn't engage in combat and as such I do not feel guilty. Once she lets me into the base and I am certain her friends aren't going to kill me, I dismiss her and then I get to work stealing the three special keys that are needed to unlock the unique explosive rubble skin for the base. Escaping the base was easier than expected. 
Having no armor means I move pretty fast, and for good measure I also drank one of those atomic cocktails I got from Ranger Jackson to increase my energy resistance just in case. My luck very clearly pays off during the escape as I narrowly avoid a Goss rifle shot that more than likely would have reduced my head to jelly. With the Brotherhood out of the way it is time for me to head for Vegas and really start putting that luck stat to good use. No point wasting your time about how I absolutely cleaned house at all the casinos, just know that I came out of there with just shy of 47,000 caps. That may sound like overkill, well that's because it is, however in a playthrough like this money is more important than ever for my survival. Most obvious is that I can now use this to buy all the medical supplies I will ever need, but what is even better is I can head to the New Vegas clinic and over the course of a few minutes essentially turn myself into a cyborg. I purchased the two most expensive implants first, these let me regenerate health over time, albeit slowly, and also increase my base damage resistance. While these are the ones that I spent all that time gambling for, I also pick up a few of the cheaper ones so I can increase my special stats, because why not? With my implants ready to go I am one adamantium skeleton perk away from becoming Wolverine, and now it is off to the boomers because I want some easy experience. Much like the Brotherhood I don't like my odds of fighting the boomers even with my new upgrades, so this is going to be one of those times where you actually help them with their problems. First up is Doc Argyle as usual whose patience I can heal up easy enough with my medicine skill along with the help of a magazine. This gets me enough experience to hit level 6 and now I can take the first rank in the toughness perk, so this coupled with my implant means I'm not a complete spaghetti noodle anymore in terms of bone structure. Next is Pete's history lesson, but really I'm here for the snow globe, and since I lack the repair skill to help Loyal I decide to go help Raquel out with the ant issue. Much like the ants earlier in this run they don't pose much of a challenge, even more so as I'm a little bit stronger now. When I was down with the ants however I wasn't able to find enough missiles to make the boomers love me, so on the topic of weird love I help out Jack with the stocking situation. This is usually just a rather mundane quest that involves a lot of fast travelling back and forward from Nellis to the Crimson Caravan Company, the only thing that decided to spice this up this time was that a random fiend entered the compound and killed Blake. Lucky for me he wasn't essential for this quest so I just tell Janet she won't be getting paid and now she gets to spend the rest of her days living in an old rundown Air Force base. Finally it's time to get the bomber from the lake and thanks to my earlier journey to get Veronica I can just run the short distance from one day trading post. I was lucky enough to mostly avoid the creatures from the Black Lagoon, abuse my high endurance to easily attack the ballast to the plane and then do something controversial. I don't see using the detonator as a weapon as there's no way to physically hit someone with it, if pistol whipping was the thing in New Vegas this would be a different story, but as it stands it's more of a tool and as such I think it's okay to be used. Now that the boomers love me you would think now would be the prime time to return to Vegas and confront Benny, and you would be correct. However, as Boulder City is close by I decide to pay the cans there a visit. I lack the speech skill for a peaceful solution and staying in the NCR's good graces will help me later, so on that note the cans must perish. I start by freeing the soldiers so the cans will turn hostile and while I focus on this one here the NCR can be heard in the background gunning down the rest of them. This just leaves Jessup and his friend who I lure into the firing line. Jessup himself was fairly unlucky as he tried to toss a grenade but one of the soldiers must have had their snake aisle this morning as he effortlessly shot the thing out of his hand causing him to explode. With another job well done I made some trips for some healing supplies and now it was time to confront Benny. As much as I would like to storm the tops and punch up everyone inside, I decide to play things a bit smarter this time. Something I completely forgot about is that with Benny's lighter from Jessup, I can convince Swank to let me investigate his quarters. After having a brief chat with Yes Man to further the plot, I return to Swank and inform him of Benny's double crossing misdeeds. Now Swank gives me the option to either talk with Benny or have him send up to his room alone where I can assassinate him. Well, I didn't max out my unarmed skill for no reason, so I have him sent upstairs and then we begin to throw down. I was initially worried that Maria would tear right through my unarmoured body, but turns out the implants and toughness perk managed to almost negate its damage entirely. To make matters worse for poor Benny, I managed to disarm him during the fight, and just to make sure he doesn't get any ideas, I pick Maria up off the table, and now it's an old fashioned fist fight. Now that he can't shoot me in the head and leave me for dead, I am more than able to overpower him, and once he's dead, I take the platinum chip from his corpse, give it to House, watch the presentation, and now I can begin the long walk to Cottonwood Cove. I do make one slight detour on the way to Caesar, and that's to stop off in Novak to learn the Ranger takedown from Andy. I may have missed out on Veronica's special move but I was determined to learn from Andy as well as Lucius whenever I reached the fort. Speaking of which, the trek to the fort was a safe one for once, probably because I don't have to deal with the NCR's hitmen this time. I did manage to flex on some of the local wildlife though. When I arrive Caesar orders me to head down and blow up the bunker, which I agree to do, so that he doesn't immediately have me killed. Once I get my healing supplies back and head underneath the fort, I thought I would try and punch my way through. But as you can see, while I'm in no immediate danger, it takes a considerable amount of time to take down a single Protectron. To that end, I guzzle down my last atomic cocktail and briskly jog my way to the control console and activate the Securitrons. I get a little roughed up on the way out, but to be honest that energy resistance is working wonders right now. Despite the fact the bunker is very much intact, Caesar still congratulates me on a job well done with 500 experience. 
I quickly learn the unarmed skill from Lucius, and then before Caesar can sway me to the dark side, I head back to the Lucky 38 to continue my role as the best intern ever. Next up he wants the aid or destruction of the boomers, which thanks to me doing earlier, just requires a round trip to Nels to talk to Pearl before returning to house and in the process advancing to level 10. I was originally planning to take the finesse perk, but then I had an idea. Why not really put my luck to the test, so to that end I took the mysterious stranger perk. This will either be a really great idea, or a complete waste of a perk. Only time will tell. I am now going to do something I never thought I would do. I am going to actually complete the Omerta's quest for Mr. House. I know, I'm also just as shocked as you are. When I enter, I talk to the receptionist to get information about Gamora, and I don't immediately slam her head into the desk for once. She points me in the direction of a man named Kachino, who she believes will help me out. Lo and behold, he is as much an asshole as the rest of them, that is until I steal this journal of his, and then all of a sudden he becomes my best friend, and offers to help me take them down from the inside. I also make a nice 100 caps in the process, not that I needed any more money mind you. Kachino then points me towards two other individuals that may be able to help, those being Troik and Clandon. I decide to check in on Troik first, simply because he's the only part of this quest that I actually remember, as it's been that long since I've even attempted this. Essentially, he has been smuggling weapons in for the Omertas, so with a high enough speech skill, as well as some performance enhancing drugs and alcohol, I can not only convince him to turn on the Omertas bosses, but I can also have him destroy the weapons with Thermite himself and keep my hands clean in the process. Now, as for Clandon, there is this whole big thing I can investigate there as well, but you see, I haven't punched anyone in like 15 minutes at this stage, so... As luck would have it, this actually completes part of the quest with no repercussions on my end, so that's a welcome change for once. Now I can return to Kachino with all the new information, and he informs me the bosses, Nero and Big Sal, want to have a chat with me. I know from experience that they will try to kill me after the conversation, so I take the initiative and attack first. As luck would have it, I also managed to get the Mysterious Stranger Park to activate, which really just makes this whole encounter go by without a hitch. With Kachino now in charge of Gamora, I head back to house to inform him that I have dealt with the situation, as well as my previous destruction of the Brotherhood at Hidden Valley. After congratulating me, he informs me that I won't be able to protect the president due to my rep with the NCR. Turns out it's still at neutral, but considering the work I did for them at Prim, it should be close to accepted. With that in mind, I load back to just before I told Mr. House about the murders, and decide to head towards Nipton so that I could complete the quest for Ranger Ghost. On the way, I stop to squish more ants, as it's become a rather favourite pastime of mine in this playthrough, plus the ant nectar I can get off the big ones is useful for combat. For a moment, I thought the ants were going to get the better of me as the game wouldn't exit vats after the stranger appeared. Thankfully, New Vegas eventually fixed itself, and I was able to survive. At Nipton, I killed Oliver Swanick and Boxcars for the experience, spoke to Volpes, and then returned to Ghost, and sure enough, increased my reputation to accept it. Now that I'm best friends with the NCR, I returned to House to tell them the good news, and now I can make my way for the dam and save by preventing the assassination for a change. We all know how this goes, but rather than steal the detonator from the fake engineer and hand it over to Grant right away, I instead hold on to it until the Legion sniper reveals himself and go and give him a taste of justice first hand. He manages to get a few shots off, but nothing I won't be able to heal through in time. I then told Grant about the sniper, which then caused the surviving assassin to charge the president and somehow kill one of the guards with a tiny knife. He is of course killed almost immediately, and the president lives another day to tell terrible speeches. One last task before assaulting the dam, and that's to power up the substation. So, one quick trip there results in a level up, and I can finally take the piercing strike perk, which will probably be necessary for the final battle. Speaking of the Battle of Hoover Dam, this is a lot easier than you might think. Considering the fact I am still friends with the NCR, this means that all I have to worry about is the Legion, but they aren't really an issue when the NCR are hard focused on them instead of me. Plus, my fully upgraded Securitrons rip them to shreds with their lasers and rockets. When I get to the Legacy Camp, things are more difficult of course. But, thanks to the piercing strike perk, I can punch through most of the Legion's armour without too much hassle. When it was time to face Lanius, even though I knew it would be a death sentence, I at least wanted to try and fight him with his Legion backup. As you may have guessed, it did not take very long for them to overwhelm me and my Securitron bodyguard. Clearly, that was going to be impossible without lowering the difficulty, so I instead opted for the semi-honourable route. I say semi because while we agreed to fight one on one, apparently my backup did not get the same message, and instead after a decent way into our fight, the Securitron decides to unleash a full volley of missiles at the Legate, killing him almost immediately. Not going to complain about an easy fight with the Legate however, so now it was time to approach the gate and meet with the General. I thought that maybe since I saved the President that he'd be willing to listen to reason, but nothing short of a max speech skill would persuade him to back down, so it was time for a fight. Thankfully, the Securitrons and House dealt with the Rangers while I was able to focus on Oliver, and was at the very least able to get the experience for killing him. Mr. House then approaches, explaining the next stage of his plan, finishing the story, crashing my game, and confirming that yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas without any weapons or armour. 
I'm quite surprised by how normal, shall we say, this challenge got in terms of difficulty after I got those implants and the right perks. I honestly thought I would have a much tougher time trying to stay alive, but as you saw, that was not the case. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe. Try one of these videos out every week. My name is Norbert, I'd say for one, I'll see you all in the next video.